This dress is just awful. Oh my god, this is such a vibe. Now, girl, I think we went from bad to even worse. Ooh. <laughs> Hello, my beautiful light brights. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Neon Noir. I'm a half Italian, half Canadian drag queen living in Belgium. And if you're new here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Today, we are playing my favorite game, Fab or Drab, where we rate the looks of Drag Race Belgique, season two, episode two, and let you know if the looks are fab and fabulous or drab and awful. Today, the queens are going ahead and doing a sewing challenge. I know one of the hardest challenges in Drag Race history, but thankfully all the queens are getting actual fabrics to work with, thank God, but each queen is designated to a specific color to give us their interpretation. The theme is drag over the rainbow. Now before we get into these looks, let me just say a few words. I think the producers did these queens dirty. Yes, they gave them fabric, but they gave them non-stretch fabric. Now, anybody who's a drag queen or anybody who knows drag knows that stretch fabric is the way to go. Can you do stuff with non-stretch fabric? Absolutely. But that's only if you are an excellent seamstress. And on top of it, most of us drag queens wear a lot of stretch fabric because we dance, we move. So even professional designers dress us in stretchy material. So whichever producer, PA, decided to go buy these fabrics clearly didn't know much about drag or was setting us up for a failure. And from a failure, they did. Spoiler alert, this is gonna be a bumpy episode. So without further ado, let's get into it. First up, it's Morphe, and Morphe is giving us black fantasy. She's coming out in this sparkly dress with feathers at the bottom and this crazy messed up hair. She goes on to say this is the most beautiful dress she's ever made. And girl, if this is the most beautiful dress you've ever made, we got problems. I will say that just that sentence scared me because this dress is just awful. It is so plain and shapeless. I wish she had much more of a curve to her. The one thing I do like is the use of feathers at the bottom. It definitely gave some movement, but I wish there was like four or five times as many to really give you a little bit more definition. It just really felt very boxy. On top of it, she decided to pair it with this messed up hair, which really didn't elevate the look. The thing is, when you're gonna make a dress, the trick is to accessorize the out of it to make it look as good as possible. And Morphe missed that memo hardcore. In the workroom, she showed a specific headpiece she was gonna wear. That would have been so much better than what she actually put on this runway. On top of it, the rest of her body looks so bare. She doesn't have a necklace, she doesn't have any bracelets, she doesn't have any boots, she doesn't have any gloves. Like, all of these things could have really taken this to the next level, and right now it just looks very mediocre. So if you didn't guess, this is 100% gonna be a drab from me. <laughs> Next up is Chloe Clark, and Chloe Clark is coming out giving us red. And she's coming out with this jacket dress sort of attire. She's paired it with some gloves and some beautiful hair. First, let's talk about the positive. Chloe Clark understood the assignment. She goes, you know what? I'm not the best seamstress. This is not the best look, but I am gonna sell it to you on the runway. On top of it, she decided to pair it with really big hair, lots of jewelry, gloves, a scarf, anything to try to enhance this look to make it look good or better. You know what I mean? She definitely had a vibe in mind and she was trying to go somewhere. The problem is she didn't really get there. I think that this, ultimately this dress skirt thing, I love the ambition, but it just missed the mark a little bit. And it didn't feel fitted. It didn't feel to the same level that Chloe Clark is used to showing us. And ultimately you can see that she was lacking in the sewing department. On top of it, I really think that the fabrics really killed her. Had she had some stretch fabric, she probably would have come up with something else, but she was really working with what she had. And honestly, she did pretty good for what she had. Better than I could do, to be honest, because without any stretch fabric, I don't know if I can even pull this off. That being said, is it good? No, it's not. It's not good at all. And even though she tried really hard, I'm still gonna have to go ahead and give her a 
drab. <laughs> Next up is Alvida. She's coming out in this simple two-body dress paired with a boa and the biggest hair. Now I will say that I love that she did accessories and she did big hair with it. It definitely tried to pump up this outfit that really definitely needed to pump up because ultimately this dress is literally two pieces of fabric stuck together with like two seams. She is lucky she is a bitch that can pull something like this off because if you had any curves, this would not work. That being said, I do actually wish she had a little bit of curves because she was using her natural boy body and going for like this supermodel look it feels even more plain. A little bit of breast or a little bit of ass, just enough to like give you a little bit of shape would have gone a long way. I really like the boa. I think that that was the fun part and probably the best part of the outfit. And I love that she also went with big hair to try to give you some height and give you some drama. Unfortunately, I don't like this hair with this dress. It's blonde and black and then the outfit is yellow. I wish it was like either all black or had if she had some yellow wig or could have borrowed someone's yellow wig. It's just not matching in terms of a vibe. And again, this doesn't feel like Alvida's aesthetic or her or her level of drag. All in all, it's one of the better ones of today and that's sort of the problem with this whole episode. But still, I'm gonna have to go ahead and give her a drab. <laughs> Next up is Gabbana, and Gabbana is coming out wearing gold, mama. She's coming out wearing this sort of asymmetrical gold outfit with one gold leg and half a gold dress. She's paired it with a gold top and gold sleeves. So let's go ahead and start with the positive. The positive is that Gabbana said, you know what, this is probably not the best outfit, so let me rhinestone the shit out of this outfit to give it some bling and some moments. And that was a very smart idea. On top of it, she said, you know what, I'm also gonna put all of my gold jewelry, necklace, earrings, and everything to give you a little bit of that shimmer on the runway. The outfit itself is very middle of the road, very forgettable, but honestly, forgettable on this season of Drag Race seems to be a very good place to be. I wish uh, some of the styling would have been changed a little bit had she done this with a black updo and given you more of this like Studio 54 vibes, then she could have sold the outfit a little bit more and maybe thrown on a belt or something to kind of hide some of those like weird seam issues. All in all, it's nothing special, it's nothing great, and if this was any other season of Drag Race, it would be in the bottom. But considering this is Drag Race Belgique season two, and there's a lot worse to queens, she is lucky she got saved. That being said, I'm still go ahead and give it a drab. <laughs> Next up, it's Sarah Logan, and Sarah Logan has got the color green, and she said she is channeling Mother Nature. Now, girl, I think we went from bad to even worse. Ooh. Sarah Logan is coming out in this two-tone green outfit with this little panty and green capelet. She's paired it with these green arms, green hair, and these leaves in her hair. I could see where Sarah Logan was going. I can see she, she actually tried and uh, did something with the fabric. And you know what? This looks, and this actually looks like fabric and flowing. Even though I understood her vision, this all comes down to execution, and the execution just wasn't there. If I was there, had I gotten green, and green would have been the color I would have wanted, especially seeing those leaves I would have went down the poison ivy route giving you this like little mini dress and put some leaves all over it and called it a day but she decided to go down this route and she didn't do herself any favors with the accessorizing she decided to go with a flat hair wrong choice she decided to put a whole bunch of jewelry on it which just didn't match the vibe. I fully get that you have to put jewelry on this to make it look somewhat decent. You know what I mean? This is a hard challenge, but this was the wrong type of jewelry because this was like this very elegant jewelry with this not so elegant gown. It just needed to match a little bit better. I think also in terms of the shoe, I think some sort of like gladiator boot would have been really cool or some thigh high just to give you something else to look at. All in all, this was a complete miss and I'm so disappointed because on episode one, I was like, oh my God, Sarah Logan has come to play. And then she turns out on episode two with this one. And I was like, damn, she was on the rise to me and then just failed with this one. And I'm so disappointed. All in all, it's not great. And it's gonna get yet again, another 
drab. <laughs> Next up, it's Madame Yoko, and Madame Yoko has got the color blue, honey. And Madame Yoko is channeling Le Petit Prince, which is like this storybook that a lot of French kids read when they are a child. Honestly, this is a great outfit. Thank God someone turned something out because this was becoming a very depressing episode. I am so glad that somebody's coming out with a finished garment, a garment that actually looks really good. Pants are hard to make. So not only is she got one of the best outfits on the runway, I think she got the most challenging one to construct on top of it. On top of it, I love that she had a concept. Now, whether the concept was the best one or not, it doesn't matter. She had a concept, she had a storyline, she had a color and she stuck to it and the whole outfit made sense. The only thing that's really killing me with this outfit is this hair. What is it with these queens and pairing the wrong hair with the outfits? This hair is too tiny and too orange to be with this outfit. This could have been fixed one of two ways. Either she would have went with a completely different hair that was a little bit taller and gave her more of that like prince, princess, regal vibe, which could have worked. Or she could have taken like some sort of tiara or crown and put it on top of it to give her a little bit of height because it's just not the right proportion. All in all, despite the wig snafu, I'm still gonna have to go ahead and give her a fab. <laughs> Next up is La Verve, and La Verve is coming out in the color purple. She's coming out in this sort of lilac purple dress with this sort of tulle boa and this big purple hair. Finally, we have a queen that knows how to pair a hair to an outfit. Thank God, because I was getting very, very concerned. This hair was such a smart choice because it definitely helped elevate this outfit and helped it squeeze through the middle. But let's get on to the dress. The dress itself is awful. It is literally like tacked together. And this was really surprising to me because Laverve said that she knows how to sew. If she knows how to sew, then I'm shocked out of this one. I also think that it was the wrong choice of fabric. This fabric feels very soft and dull. We needed a little bit of shine, a little bit of shimmer. It would have went a long way. Now I have no idea what kind of fabric she had to work with. So maybe that could have been some of the producer's faults. That being said, she probably went with this color because it matched the best with her wig, which I gotta say was a smart choice. Ultimately, I just wish it was fitted a little bit better because she's looking a little bit, she's looking a little bit chunky in the mid waist and I wish she would have had more figure. Had this dress been in the exact same color, but done a mermaid style with just the bottom flowing, I think it would have gotten a really great pass. This shape is not the best on La Verve and it's making her look chunky in the middle, which she's not. All in all, great attempt, but still gonna get a drab. <laughs> Next up, it's Star. And Star's got the color pink and she's coming out in this like half leather coat dress with this little shiny tube top underneath paired with this blonde hair and these accessories all around. Now I will say the one thing about this outfit is you can see that Star knows how to sew and has an idea in mind. This is probably one of the better constructed outfits and definitely had a vision to it. You can see all the seams and working with leather is incredibly difficult. The problem Star has is again with her accessorizing. Although it was well made, it was missing that impact that we really needed. On top of it, the accessories she did choose were a little bit weird. This chunky necklace seemed to come out of nowhere and was a complete mismatch. This hair bandana was not giving the same vibe as this coat. Like this coat has got like this like leathery feel to it. And so I would have probably expected her to go more in this sort of matrixy vibe, a little bit, you know, hardcore. And she decided to go with this like 60s jazz hand hair and hairband. And I'm just like, the two don't go together. It is 100% a styling issue more than it is a garment issue with Star. And, and that's what's really killing me because I know she's an amazing queen with lots of years of experience. So I feel like these are just things she would be excellent at. I mean, she can make a dress, that's clear. And that's a lot better than half of these other b****s. All in all, despite the dress being well made, it's not my favorite. And that's why I'm gonna go ahead and give her a drab. <laughs> Next up is Lulu Velvet, and Lulu Velvet has got the color white. She's coming out in this little white dress with sort of tulle on top of it and really pointy shoulders. On top of it, she decided to make this sort of little white mesh eye band and wearing no hair. 
Oh my god, this is such a vibe. Again, I'm so excited to see another queen who knows what she's doing. Because the producers gave them non-stretch fabric, you really have to be a master seamstress to get something like this out there. And clearly, Lou Velvet is a master seamstress because this is freaking fantastic. It's got shape, it's got uniqueness. It definitely feels like a really well-made garment. And it's got a lot of right proportions. She's showing skin where she needs to be showing skin. And she's covered in other places to give you lots of different places for your eye to jump at. Now, let's talk about the hair. She didn't wear any. This was a bold move. And had this been a bad outfit, probably the wrong move. But since this is such a good outfit, it just adds that little bit of androgyny and that little edge to this outfit that I kind of love. It really puts that juxtaposition into the whole outfit. She said that she was channeling Celine Dion from Eurovision, which honestly, I don't see at all. But hey girl, get your references wherever you want to get your references as long as you throw out a great look and a great look she did. All in all, this is one of the best ones of the night and she is definitely gonna get a fab. And that is it for this week's episode. Girl, I told you it was gonna be a tough one to get through and I apologize to all those queens who I've sent a massive drab to. Hopefully they'll do better next week. But enough about that, now let's get into what you've all been waiting for. Who had my fabs and drabs of the week? Well, let's start off with the drabs. And boy, was this a hard one to choose because I gave a lot of drabs. But this week, I'm gonna give my drab of the week to Miss Sarah Aww. Logan. Ultimately, there was a lot of drabs this week, a lot of horrible outfits. So it was actually really hard for me to choose just one because there were so many contenders. But I ended up going with Sarah Logan, not because the dress was the worst, because so many of them did bad dresses, but because I thought the styling was the worst. That's ultimately what it came down to. Some people saved themselves with really great styling. But enough about the negative, let's get into the positive. Who had my fab of the week? Well, let's face it, my fab of the week, there was only two real contestants to choose from, and that was Lulu Velvet and Madame Yoko. And ultimately, I'm gonna go with Lulu Velvet. I didn't have that many choices, but even if I did have more choices, this looks like a outfit that would have stood out even on some of the better seasons of this challenge. Y'all, what did you think of this week's episode? Personally, I hate a design challenge, but if you are gonna do a design challenge, I really wish they would have done it as part of a ball so that you could have at least seen two really great looks and then one not so great look. But doing a whole challenge just based on sewing and so early into the competition, I have no idea what the producers were thinking about. This is starting to become a rocky season and I hope they turn it around, but uh, let's watch and find out. I am very curious. Anyway, y'all, do you agree or disagree with my thoughts? Well, go ahead and leave a comment down below. And while you're there, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. I do read all of them and try to reply to most of them. Once again, my name is Neon Noir, at Miss Neon Noir on all social platforms, and I'll see you next week for the next episode. Bye. -bye.